Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to Step Through the Ropes, Volume 19. Of course, the buzz about the world of pro wrestling has been the fact that this month marked 30 years since Mark Calloway became the undertaker in the World Wrestling Federation. Now, he debuted with the World Wrestling Federation officially just days before the 1990 Survivor Series where he did tapings for superstars of wrestling at Wrestling Challenge, but his his debut to the world as The Undertaker up, occurred in the 1990 Survivor Series where he was revealed as the mystery partner of Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Team. Taker was led to the ring by a brother Love, Bruce Pritchard, and The Undertaker made a huge impact as he eliminated Coco Beware and the late American Dream Dusty Rhodes to, um, uh, and eventually The Undertaker got counted out in the matchup, but DiBiase's team still prevailed, but nonetheless, The Undertaker did leave such a, a, a lasting impression in that matchup. Now, it may be safe to say that even though The Undertaker is, could, could, could be considered the real Mr. WrestleMania, considering his famous streak that lasted 20, yeah, 21 and 0 before he was finally beaten at WrestleMania by Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. But um, the Survivor Series could pretty much be considered his show as well. And let me explain why. As I mentioned, he debuted in 1990 at, in a winning effort despite not surviving the getting count out of the match. One year later, he challenged Hulk Hogan and defeated him for the World Championship, which was the first time the title was defended at a Survivor Series pay-per-view. A year after that, Undertaker defeated um, Kamala, who passed away this year in a coffin matchup. A year later, in 1993, The Undertaker replaced Tatanka, joined forces with Lex Luger and the Steiner Brothers as the All-Americans to defeat the Foreign Fanatics, uh, consisting of Jock Rougeau, Crush, Yokozuna, Ludwig Borga, and rest the last three men's souls that I mentioned. Uh, a year later, Taker defeated Yokozuna and Survivors of 94 in a casket match. Then, in 1995, The Undertaker uh, led the Dark Side, uh, which were his like real-life BSK friends, Savio Vega, Henry Godwin, and Fatu, who later became Rikishi, as they defeated the Royals, Jerry the King Lawler, Isaac Kenkum DDS, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, and the late King Mabel. <clears throat> and 1996 Survivor Series, The Undertaker defeated Mankind in a match where Taker's former manager, uh, Paul Bear, who has since passed away, was locked in a cage suspended above the ring. Taker didn't wrestle at Survivor Series again until 1998 when he was in the one-night tournament to crown to fill the vacancy of a world title, uh, Taker had defeated Kane in the quarterfinal matches, but Taker was defeated by The Rock on a disqualification when Kane hit the ring and attacked The Rock. Uh, Taker was not a part of Survivor, Survivor Series again until the year 2000. He missed 1999 due to, due to being uh, out with injuries. Uh... 2000 Taker was defeated by Kurt Angle, thanks to some help from Kurt's brother, Eric. At the 2001 Survivor Series, Taker was part of Team WWF with The Rock, Chris Jericho, Kane, and The Big Show as they defeated Steve Austin, Rob Van Dam, Booker T, Shane McMahon, and Kurt Angle. Taker missed the 2002 Survivor Series. Uh, at 2003, Undertaker was defeated by Vince McMahon in a Buried Alive match, thanks to Kane. In 2004, The Undertaker defeated Heidenreich. Taker did not wrestle at Survivor Series 2005, but he came out and crashed Randy Orton's uh, celebration of the first ever Team Raw vs. Team SmackDown match in Survivor Series history. Uh, in 2006, The Undertaker was defeated by... Uh, Mr. Kennedy in a first blood match. At the 2008... I'm sorry, that was 2006 when Mr. Kennedy defeated um, Taker in a first blood match. In 2007, Batista defeated The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. 
Survivor Series 2008, Undertaker defeated The Big Show in a casket match. One year later, The Undertaker defeated Big Show and Chris Jericho in a triple threat match to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. And then The Undertaker didn't wrestle at Survivor Series again until 2015, which marked 25 years since his debut. He uh, joined forces with Kane in a winning effort over... Uh, I forgot which two members of the Wyatt family it was. I don't know if it was Luke Harper or Eric Ro- and Eric Rowan. Or was Bray Wyatt one of them? And that was the last time The Undertaker ever wrestled at the Survivor Series in... Uh, Yeah, in um, in Survivor's history, and of course, this past Sunday, Undertaker came out at the end of the 2020 Survivor's pay per view as like a nice in ring ceremony, and pretty much Undertaker is, after 30 long years of being the Undertaker, has officially announced that his career is over. Now, looking back on this, of course, we look back at the beginning. Well, not the very beginning, but when I first saw The Undertaker was in WCW by the name of Mean Mark Callis, and he replaced Sid Vicious in the Skyscrapers. A uh, short time after being put in that position, uh, Dan Spivey, the other original Skyscraper, ended up leaving WCW, and then they did this angle where the Skyscraper's manager, uh, Teddy Long, sold Callis' contract to Paulie Dangerously, a.k.a. Paul Heyman, and he seemed to be on the rise of solo success. But uh, Ole Anderson, who had the book in WCW, he uh, told The Undertaker that no one would ever pay him to pay to see him wrestle just because he has red hair. Now, looking back on this, and not because The Undertaker is my favorite wrestler of all time, I have to say, I mean, and this is, this is not the only reason I'm saying this, but... Ole Anderson is not just a, a an old shriveled up prune, but he's a shithead. And not and not just because he's bitter about the business, but he seems like a real shithead. Okay. But looking back, and he eventually did Undertaker, of course, eventually did come actually he stopped in New Japan Pro Wrestling, wrestling by the name of Punisher Dice Morgan before he became the Undertaker. And looking back, you know, throughout the years I've noticed the WWF would take many uh, WCW rejects who like either got treated like crap or they didn't get very far in WCW. And next to Stone Cold Steve Austin, could The Undertaker possibly be the biggest WCW reject of them all? Well, let me know what you think in your comments, folks. Do you think he's he Undertaker himself could pa- could pretty much be Mr. Survivor Series or the real Mr. WrestleMania? Or basically, and was he really the biggest WCW reject? Uh, please let me know in your comments. And I will say, he, he's obviously, I know he's like 55 years old now. He, I'm guessing all the injuries may have caught up with him. But, you know, I'd be very surprised if he ever did wrestle again. But uh, definitely happy retirement to The Undertaker.